Hello everyone, this is Brox Gags, and I'm going to make this video uh, discussing the SolidWorks Pack and Go feature, uh, specifically for its use in SolidWorks assemblies. And so here I've got a simplified uh, scissor jack assembly, and I've made it using the, the usual bottom-up approach where I've created each one of the part files independent from each other in their own SolidWorks part files, or SLDPRTs, and then I brought them all together inside of the SolidWorks assembly. And so one of the key things to remember about when working with assemblies, especially in the bottom-up approach, and you're not doing any top-down or in-context or virtual parts, is that the assembly file must know the location of the actual SOLIDWORKS part files it contains. And so if it does not know the location of those part files, you'll actually have troubles when it goes to try to open up the assembly and display the parts. And just to show that as an example, um, here I've got the assembly. Um, obviously it's opening up correctly. I'll go ahead and close the assembly now. And here is the directory with the assembly file here and all the part files. And watch what happens if I just remove one of them. And I'll paste it to the desktop. And then I will try to open it up again. And so now I'm just opening the same assembly file except for now you can see that foot component is no longer in the same directory. I immediately get this error message saying, hey, I cannot find the base underscore foot part. What would you like me to do? Do you want to browse for it yourself? Do you want to suppress the component? Do you want to suppress all missing components? So on and so forth. And you get the same style message here in the view report dialog box. Basically what this is telling you is SolidWorks went to this location, the pack and go directory, looked for a file base underscore foot, and it could not find it. And so then it suppressed it. And so this is one of the things you don't want to have happen if you've been working a whole lot on a specific assembly, and then you say just send them the SOLIDWORKS assembly file. They'll open it up, they'll get a brief image of what the assembly looks like, then they'll immediately get that countdown where it's going to suppress all the individual components because they have not included it. And so let's first fix this guy. And so I'll come back here, bring that file back into the pack and go directory or folder and then try to reopen the assembly and you can see it opens completely and I've got my foot part right here. But really who wants to keep track of all that, especially if you have a, a very complex assembly, say you've got a hundred parts in an assembly, um, it becomes somewhat difficult especially when those parts maybe spread, spread across multiple folders in, in order to keep track of all that. And the SOLIDWORKS is a nice utility that does that for us and so to access it you go from file to the drop down and go to pack and go. And so here's the Pack and Go main dialog box. Uh, you can see the main portion of it is this grid here where there's checkboxes indicating the files that's identified and it's going to throw into a specific location after it completes the Pack and Go operation. And so what it's done for us is it's identified a top level assembly, the scissor jack under simplified, and it's found all of the parts as well. So you can see, um, you can see it's in folder and they're all in the, the Pack and Go folder here. And so you can then say, well, I want to take all these files as well as the assembly and let's say save it to a zip file. And so here I'll just browse to another location. We'll put it in the downloads and say a test zip file. Hit save here. That loads the string here so it now knows where to save the zip file. And what would happen at this point if I hit save is that it's going to take all the part files, take a copy of the assembly file, put them together in a folder and zip that folder and put it in the downloads location. And then I could immediately take that and say email it to another individual that wanted to use the assembly. You can also include things other than just parts and assemblies. That's the check boxes here up here in this top portion of the dialog before. And so if you've ran a simulation associated with this, um, you could include the simulation results. So if you've already made 2D drawings of it, you could include those drawings as well. And so it is pretty uh, flexible in what it can allow you to do here inside of Pack and Go. And so just to illustrate, I'll save this to a zip file. I'll hit save. You can see the work there at the very bottom of the screen. It went relatively quickly. I'll close out of here. I'll go to my downloads. Here's the test zip file. And just to prove this worked, I'll extract, open up the extracted folder, and there is the scissorjack underscore simplified assembly again. And notice all the parts are here, it opened up correctly, I uh, didn't do anything to the mates, I didn't show before, but basically if I suppress one mate, I can get the, the scissor lift to actuate here, just as I would expect. And so that's exactly what you'd want if you sent this to say your 
supervisor and one of them to evaluate your work. And so uh, that's a quick snapshot of the pack and go tool inside of SolidWorks. I'm really not a very uh, hard feature to master. It's just one of those things that is very convenient and will save you some headaches down the road um, when you're working with larger assemblies. And so as usual, thank you for watching the video.